What up, Forward family? It's Forward Fabian, Big Boss Fable, back with a video for the gang, for the squad, man, for the family. I got a Mr. Nightmare reaction to five disturbing true Home Alone stories, man. Here's a throwback of throwbacks. So it's a Home Alone, Home Edition. Uh, yeah, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on Instagram, Twitter at Forward Fabian. It's the road to a million, man. If you enjoy my Mr. Nightmare reactions, check out my Mr. Nightmare playlist. That being said, let's hop into the reaction video, man. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Turn on the notifications. Engage with all the content. That only helps me on the platform. Helps the algorithm push my content out. So let's get into the reaction video, man. I'm 30 years old, and I share a house with my sister. It's a two-floor house, a mother-daughter house, meaning it has two kitchens. My sister takes the downstairs, I take the upstairs. My sister isn't home a lot because she often stays with her boyfriend who lives 20 miles away. Like I said, I'm 30. I shouldn't let being home alone ever freak me out. But, admittedly, sometimes it does. This happened on a night that I was home alone in my living room watching a scary movie. Mm. My part of the house is an open layout, so the living room, dining room, and kitchen Don't are all one big space. My couch is in the middle of the space, so as I watch TV on the couch, my back is to a large part of the room behind me. So for those a little more easily spooked, it wouldn't be the most comfortable place to be sitting alone watching a scary movie. I'll admit, as I watched in the dark room with nothing but the light from the TV to cancel the darkness of the room, I found myself glancing over my shoulder a lot. I like to think I'm not the only 30-year-old male that does that. But anyway, after the movie, okay. I brushed my teeth, turned off all the lights in the house, then went to sleep. My sleep lasted for about two hours. I woke up around 1am, and I wasn't sure why I woke up at first. Then I heard a voice downstairs. It sounded like my sister. It sounded like she was inside the house, so it's not like she was calling for me to open the door. But still, I knew it was my sister's voice. I didn't know what she was yelling up to me though, but I was still groggy and not thinking straight. All I could think was that she must have been calling for me, or arguing with her boyfriend. So I got out of bed and went into the pitch black hall. I turned on the hallway lights and then made my way through the living room and heard my sister's voice again from downstairs. Now I could understand her to be saying my name. I made my way downstairs in the yeah, dark, yelling back at her, what is it? It looks stupid dark. <laughs> Damn. I looked for the light switch in the foyer. That right there is uh, your worst nightmare. You know like them houses that's just like really creepy? You probably wouldn't want to spend no time there. This is one of them. Downstairs, but couldn't find it. I'm telling y'all, bro. I'm not lying when I say I was groggy as hell. I walk down her little hallway towards her kitchen, find a light switch, and flick it on. The light in the kitchen lights up her little apartment, including her living room. The light starts off dim and needs time to brighten up, but I still saw that there was no one down there. Mm. Not her, not her boyfriend. I went to her bedroom, but it was empty. I called her name really loudly one time. No one called back, but shortly after I yelled, I heard something drop to the floor in my sister's bedroom, which I had just checked and it was empty. I went back up the stairs like a little kid and went back to my bed to where my phone was. I tried to call her a few times, but she didn't pick up. I had myself locked in my room, wondering if I had just hallucinated all of that. Eventually I fell asleep, and in the morning I woke up to text from my sister asking why I called her at 1am. I asked her if she was home last night, and she told me no, she was currently staying at her boyfriend's house. I went downstairs to her bedroom to see what may have fallen down on the floor but there was not a single object on the floor that could have made that noise. I'm led to believe I hallucinated everything I heard that this night. Guy. But that's what I want to believe, because the alternative would be much more horrific. It's kind of mind-bending. Nah, bro, you didn't. I've never really hallucinated anything else or had any kind of sleep disorders. So how vividly I heard my sister's voice and that sound in her room really freaks me out. Duh. -huh. It is crazy how much money I'm saving with every plate instead of ordering out every single night. And by the time. Van Van, what's up, gang? I was left home alone a lot as a kid just due to the fact that my mom was single for a good chunk of my upbringing and she worked as an RN on a crappy RN schedule. And my brother went away to college. 
This was a night that my mom was working in overnight. It was a weekend night. So I had this girl, Molly, over who I was talking to. Hey, Molly. And she hung out for a while. We watched Little a couple Mac. movies and whatnot. And eventually she had to go home because her parents don't like her out late. So I was left alone to hold down the fort. I continued to watch TV in my room and bed. My bedroom is upstairs next to the backyard. So when someone dragged one of the chairs <coughs> on the deck outside, I heard it. I got up and looked out the, the window, floor? and I saw someone sitting on one of the deck chairs down below. I Definitely. called Molly's name, thinking it was her. After all, she'd only left under ten minutes ago. Whoever it was looked up at me, but it wasn't Molly. I immediately pulled away from the window to hide. That was not anybody I recognized. Not in the darkness, at least. I texted a few close friends in our group chat if it was one of them messing with me. The ones who answered all said no, uh, and nah. asked what I was talking about. Never. I didn't really believe any of my friends would come to my house to mess with me like that anyway. Scared shitless, but still curious, I slowly walked back over to the window to look down again, and that person was still sitting in the chair, looking up at my window. Uh -huh. It was a he, that much was clear, and he definitely- That's Cap. You know, this, is, uh, this picture's from an actual captured video of some stalker who was hanging outside some dude's window. We got- Finally saw me. I hurried away from the window again to turn off the TV. I sat in my bed in a ball, basically, with my arms wrapped around my knees. I waited in darkness for a while. I didn't even want to turn my phone screen on because I was scared he'd see the light. I didn't even want to move because the window was opened and I feared that he'd hear any movement I made. <laughs> I wanted him to assume I was just no longer he got in the bedroom. You shook. I waited enough time. It had to be a solid five minutes of just sitting there. I highly doubted that man outside could still be there. Mm. I finally mustered up the courage to get up and look out the window. I felt a little part of me die inside when I saw he was still down there, looking up at my window. Instead of running away from the window again, I tried to be brave and said down to him, what do you want? I then noticed his shoulders started to go up and down as if he were laughing really hard, but he didn't make any kind of audible laughing sounds at first, till I heard a slight whistling sound coming from him. It seemed like he was laughing so hard that he was wheezing. The I hell? asked him to please go away, please. then walked away from the window again. I went back. Leave me alone. Uh. Bro, that is not going to save you. <laughs> Use your phone. Call the police. I called the cops. They're on their way. That's all you got to say, bro. Back to my bed. I was scared to call the police for some reason. I left my room and sat this at the top of the stairway guy. listening. The back door was being pushed. He was trying to get into the house. Mm -hmm. I ran back to my room to hide again. I was 14. I didn't know what else to do. Come on, son. Eventually, I heard the front door's door not being fiddled with, and the man trying to push the front door open as well. He gave up quickly, thank God. I closed my bedroom window and curtains. If our doors weren't locked, I could have been killed easily. He said kill. I was skinny and weak when I was 14, and definitely not a fighter. I didn't leave my room again that night until my mom got home around 9. I told her what happened, and her reaction was angry at me for not calling 911, and in hindsight that was very stupid of me. One of the many things I did, or rather didn't do at a young age, that I questioned greatly. Dummy boy. There's no guarantee he was gonna kill you though, my boy. Victor Forti! This was the story of how I almost died as a young kid, home alone. Dang. Possibly the most intense night of my life with way too much going on. We're a family of five. I was ten at the time. My older brother was fourteen, my little sister was five. It was a Friday night. My brother was out with his friends causing trouble, clearly, because a dreaded mm. phone call came mm. to my parents. Mm -hmm. All I remember was I was in my room playing a Star Wars video game when I heard my mom start freaking out crying. I got really scared and hurried to see what was wrong. My mom was on the phone with the hospital, calling to inform my parents that my brother had gotten hit by a car. Obviously we were all shaken and really scared. My brother's leg was broken, but I don't know what else was said on the what? phone. And really informed and hurried this to see what- This fool said my mom called to inform our parents? When I heard my mom start freaking out crying, I got really scared and hurried to see what was wrong. My mom was on the phone with the hospital, Calling to inform my parents that my Her, his mom was on the phone with a hospital calling to inform his parents. That's his mom though. So what? The what? my brother had gotten hit by a car. Obviously, we were all shaken and really scared. 
My brother's leg was broken, but I don't know what else was said on the phone. All I know is my parents hurried to get their coats on and got my little sister from her room and asked me if I was okay to stay home nah, alone. Nah, I'm not. I said yes, and they hurried out to the car and left. I'm going with y'all. I was of course really worried for my brother, but I really didn't want to go to the hospital and see him in any kind of bad condition. I don't think my parents wanted me or my sister to either, but they didn't want to leave my five-year-old sister home without them. It's worth mentioning my brother recovered just fine, as his injury is no longer relevant to the story, other than it being the reason why I was left home alone on a Friday right, night. Alright buddy, what happened? Before my dad left, he was trying to calm down my mom, telling her he was going to be okay. So seeing my dad like that made me feel better. I had a feeling my mom was just being overdramatic like any mom would be. I continued playing the Star Wars game for a couple more hours. When I heard the front door open, I had my bedroom door closed. Come on, man. Parents of the Year Award goes to. So you telling me y'all left out the front without locking the front door? Come on, gang. And you got your jit. Your young one. Home alone. By this point, it was easily past midnight and past my bedtime, so I turned off the TV and PlayStation and crawled into my bed with my Game Boy. I tried listening to hear my parents' voices, maybe hear if my brother was with them or just hear what they were saying, but I didn't hear anything. After a few minutes of not hearing them even come up the stairs, I had a feeling something was wrong. I went to my door and quietly opened it, then walked over to the ledge and banister that overlooked the living room. The lights were off. But there were three tall people standing in my living room. Mm. They weren't my family. I he was so petrified that family. I was frozen for a second before I could quietly walk back into uh -huh, my room. We finna hit a lick. Shut the door as quietly as I could in my trepidation. But it wasn't quiet enough, and I knew it. They had to have heard the door click this shut, kid. even if just slightly. I hurried to my closet door, opened it quietly, stepped inside, then shut the door. I had myself sitting behind a bunch of the boxes and bags of clothes that were stuffed in my closet. I was actually pretty covered from view. There was this short period that felt like forever that I was anticipating my bedroom door open, and it did. Mm. And at that moment, I knew I was going to die. This guy. I heard footsteps walk into the room. I couldn't tell how many people. It may have been one, it may have been two. I heard the footsteps move to my bed, then I heard my covers being played with. Then silence, then more footsteps towards the closet door, mm. then silence for a few seconds, and then the closet door opened. My heart was in my throat by this point. All I did was sit quietly and hold my breath. The door was open for a really long time, but I didn't look up. I didn't move. It had to be a good 20 seconds of silence before the door closed again. Footsteps walked away from the door, then out of the room. I finally looked up. And I just realized, from where I was crouched down behind the bags and boxes, I may have been visible to that person. It wasn't until probably an hour that I heard my parents return. I ran downstairs to them. The front door was left ajar by the people who broke in. Yeah, he probably did see him. He's just looking at him like, Alright, I'm gonna leave him alone. And they had stolen a number of valuables from our house. It was a night that just went from bad to worse for our family. My parents were in such a rush when they left for the hospital that they apparently didn't even lock the door. I was lucky to have not been killed or kidnapped. Dummy. I look back now and really wonder if the person who opened the closet and just stood there for 20 seconds saw me hiding in there. Maybe he was just a guy that came to rob a house, not to kidnap or hurt a child. Or maybe he just didn't see me and <laughs> just barely escaped death or injury. And you never know, my boy. Thank God. She takes a picture, and in that picture is this E.T. That boy got an E.T. He posts the camera. Mr. Fitton. What you want, my boy? I was home alone for an entire week one time when I was still a teenager living with my parents, which was a rare occasion since my parents don't go out a lot. My mom's rich friend Patty invited my parents on a trip that she was paying for. I'm an only child, so I was left alone in the house. We lived in Newark, Ohio, which is in Licking County. Yes, our county was actually called Licking County. My parents' old house had woods in the backyard and was on some quiet road that only a few cars would pass per day usually. We had a huge deck in the backyard overlooking the woods and a decently large backyard. We even had a little fish pond and above-ground swimming pool. 
This was on a Thursday night. I remember because I had conversations with friends about plans for the weekend that day. This was in July of 2013. I was out on the deck smoking weed with my speaker playing music. Why smoking dope? That's about the time it started. I thought I heard a voice from out in the woods. Mm. I lowered the music and listened for a little bit. It didn't repeat, so I raised it back up. When the music was loud again, I heard a voice from out in the woods again. This time I turned the music off completely and listened for longer. There was a voice calling from the woods again, confirming I wasn't just hearing things. It was a male's voice, saying, Hey, over here. Hey, hey buddy. It was kind of distant but not too far. The woods were anywhere from 20 to 30 yards away from the deck, and that's where the voice was coming from. I didn't think in a million years it was someone calling out for me, though. Rather, maybe just some kids playing manhunt or something. The voice called out again. Hey, over here, we need help. This time I realized the voice was too deep to be a kid. And when a voice yells out, we need help, obviously that'll always be slightly concerning. I was getting a little bit uncomfortable now, because now I was questioning if these yells were directed at me. Now I heard the voice yell, straight in front of you, please come help us. <laughs> the voice was coming from straight in front of me in the woods. Now I had a feeling this was directed at me. Duh. I reluctantly called back, who is that? And they responded, we just need help, we're stuck in the woods. I called back, what does that mean? And the voice <laughs> replied back, what is going on? We don't know. We need you to come here. But why though? <laughs> he asking funny questions, bro. He said, but what does that mean? That means they finna finesse you, my boy. Just please come help straight in front of you. I got out from my seat, walked down the steps of the deck onto the grass, and proceeded towards the woods. Dummy. I called out, I'm coming, where are you? I'm coming. The voice replied instantly, Right in front of you, I see you. I replied back, Wait, are you alone or with someone? There was no answer this time. I stopped in my tracks about halfway towards the woods. I had a bad feeling in my gut oh, about now this. now you got a bad feeling. I started walking backwards, back towards the house and the deck. I didn't even want to turn my back to the woods, because it took me that long to realize there was something very suspicious about this situation. I made it back to the deck, and the voice didn't say anything else. If they truly saw me and this was real, they would have said something like, where are you going at the very least? They knew I was onto the situation, but who even knows how many people were in there? Could have been one, could have been three. All I know is getting stuck in the woods makes absolutely no sense. Duh. Especially he if he I'm or they the were woods. able to literally see me. Like what? Did their shirt get caught on a branch? I went inside the house and locked all the doors just to be safe. You sound dumb. I chilled in my living room for a bit, still high, and I think that's why I was more trusting at first, because of how high and relaxed I was. Then though, I heard the voice again from outside, closer now, <laughs> definitely in the backyard and not the woods anymore. I heard splashing of water, it could have been the pool or the pond. I hurried to the window to see, I didn't see anyone at first. But then the voice called, I see you, with a laugh. I noticed him. We got him. It was one guy, at least one guy visible. He was hidden behind the pool on the other side, and I could only see his head. It was just too dark to make out anything besides his dark, medium-length hair. I closed the blinds and tried to ignore it. Maybe he'd lose interest if he saw I wasn't entertaining him. He was probably a sick, deranged person who enjoyed messing with people. So I didn't want to give him what he wanted, but my breaking point was when there was a horrible, aggressive banging on the window where I had just closed the blinds, and on the other side, the guy was screaming help. I screamed at the top of my lungs to fuck off you freak, the police are coming. I screamed it over and over, trying to make myself sound crazier than him. I heard him start to laugh on the other side of the glass. His laughing started to fade away as I assume he walked away. I sat back down on the couch, trembling, shaking out of breath. I sat there for a while, and it seemed like the guy had really given up. I still got a good night's sleep that night because weed helps me sleep. I <laughs> wonder if I would have handled that situation any differently if I wasn't high though. The situation made me more paranoid about who I opened my door to. This guy. 
You did it to yourself. When people look at films that are super beloved and then they hear stories about the difficulties. Mm-hmm. I'm 23 years old and I live at home with my parents still. One day they were both not home and I was outside playing basketball in the front yard. At some point while I was playing, I looked up at one of our upstairs windows and saw a woman standing there. Not my mom, not my sister. It was a random woman. I guess when she saw me looking at her, she dipped away from the window. When I went inside and upstairs to check the lounge room, she wasn't anywhere. Mm. I checked every single room I could. Every bedroom, the bathroom, every closet. Then I checked... That's weird, bro. Talk about creepy. The lady in the house. The lady you never find in the house. You know what I'm saying? I can see it now, bro. She disappeared, but she's peering out the window. Check the downstairs, which included the living room, kitchen, dining room, one bedroom, and more closets. Finally, I checked the basement, and I highly doubted she could be down there. It's a small basement with a couple couches, a bar, and two closets. There weren't many places for someone to hide, but when I opened the second closet door, I was incredibly scared as I didn't know of any other places someone could be hiding in the house. Mm. This was the last unchecked spot that I could think of. I yanked the door open as if I were ripping off a band-aid, and like I did with the closet before this one, I right away pushed myself into the closet just in case that woman was in there and I'd have the jump on her. But all I pushed myself into was a bunch of coats and coat hangers. I was so confused. I wasn't going to question my sanity though. I definitely saw that woman and I knew it. It wasn't the kind of thing you would just so vividly imagine. I went back to the middle floor and screamed very loud that whoever was in the house needs to get the F out. I actually screamed so loud that our next door neighbor came over and asked if I was okay. I told him that I literally just saw a woman at our upstairs window watching me play basketball. He came in and helped me search again. He should have called the feds. When we couldn't find her, I was left to assume that she snuck out through the back door, which I did unlock, after all, when I went to grab the basketball from the yard. So my neighbor left. I locked all the doors, called my parents, and told them the crazy story. And they weren't too thrilled. But they asked me to make sure nothing was stolen. I did just that. And luckily it seemed anything that was worth something was still in place. So now fast forward to that night. I went to sleep after checking Bruh. the house one more time. How you gonna check the whole house and she still finesse you? Where was she hiding though? Cause you already know something weird is gonna happen. The invisible lady. Just for peace of mind. It was hard to fall asleep though. My mind was racing for obvious reasons. Most people can't relate to seeing a stranger at their window inside of their house. But my restlessness helped me out in this situation and here's why. I was finally starting to drift away slightly. Then I heard some noises from the other side of me. I had the fan on above me, so the room wasn't dead silent, and that's why I didn't immediately turn to my other side at the first sound I heard. But the sound started to sound human-like. I turned to my other side, and there she was, <laughs> getting out from under my bed. This fool. She stood up tall. He never checked under his bed? Come on, bro above the bed and I screamed so loud louder than earlier before I jumped out of my bed and tackled her to the floor and had my hand around her throat asking her who she was my doorbell rang my neighbor again I picked the tall dirty looking woman up off the floor and dragged her to the front door with me as she struggled and scratched at me I still have two scars on my right arm from her claws I opened my front door to my neighbor again and he let himself in and helped me restrain the woman. This was when I called the police. The whole time we waited for the police, the woman was screaming and cursing at my neighbor and I, threatening us too. The best way to put it, she looked and acted like a meth head currently suffering from withdrawals. When the police arrived, one of the officers knew exactly who the woman was. Mm. They had dealt with her multiple times before. Her name was conveniently Karen. It was satisfying to watch her be brought into the back of the police the car. The Karen. I let my neighbor know how grateful I was for him coming so quickly to help. And that night, 
My mind continued to race, but instead of being completely freaked out, which I still was a little, I felt this overwhelming feeling of satisfaction, and I can't fully explain why. Because you know she's done. She's gone. She's out the house. That was the best story, I ain't gonna lie. The lady at the window, who you checked the whole house and couldn't find. Ha <laughs> ha. Let me know your thoughts on that one in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on Instagram, and Twitter, follow Fabian. Road to a million, man. Peace, love, prosperity. We'll catch you guys next time. Hey, check out my Mr. Nightmare playlist as well. Link provided in the description down below. Peace.